Hello, my name is Douglas Pierce Price. I'm working here at the ESO headquarters in Garshing. At ESO, an international team of scientists and engineers builds and operates some of the most sophisticated scientific instruments that humankind has ever seen. And it all comes together right here in Garshing. ESO is Europe's intergovernmental organization for astronomical research. Supported by at present 13 member states, it operates research facilities on two continents, Europe and South America. In Europe we find ESO's headquarters. Located in Garching near Munich, it is the scientific, technical and administrative nerve center of an organization whose task it is to develop and operate some of the world's most advanced observatories in support of all scientists in its member states. The headquarters is the home of a large science archive, which comprises scientific data obtained not only with ESO's telescopes, but also with the Hubble Space Telescope. The data are available online for scientists worldwide. On average, almost 100 gigabytes of data are requested from the archive each day, all year round. At the ESO headquarters, support astronomers also help their colleagues in the member states to prepare new observing programs. Before they can be carried out, these programs are not just subject to rigorous quality control, but are also competing against each other. There are five times more proposals than can be accommodated. Only the top proposals are finally selected for observation. Astronomy is heavily dependent on technology, and ESO is engaged in an impressive program constantly improving the performance of its current instruments as well as developing new instruments and techniques. In fact, ESO's instrument development program is probably the most ambitious in the world today. Also at Garshing, concepts for the next generation of astronomical telescopes are being developed. Thus, plans are made for telescopes and instruments that may be ready to use when some of today's school children are about to leave university. It's exciting to work here at the ESO headquarters. Still, the most fascinating aspect of ESO is its observatories, located in the Chilean Atacama Desert, 12,000 kilometres away, almost as far away from Garshing as you can get. The Atacama, the driest place on Earth. A stretch of land with practically no precipitation. Few species can survive this harsh environment. Of all places, this might seem the most improbable for one of the world's most sophisticated research facilities, the ESO Observatory on Paranal. Yet it is precisely these harsh conditions that make Paranal an almost ideal site for astronomical observations. The sky is clear almost every night, the humidity low, which is necessary for certain types of observations, and there are no nearby towns with street lights to cause light pollution. Paranal is a 2,600 meter high mountain. The mountain top has been flattened to create space for a suite of telescopes collectively known as the Very Large Telescope, or for short, the VLT. At the heart of the VLT are four telescopes, each with primary mirrors of 8.2 meters diameter. Standing 24 meters tall and weighing 430 tons, they're among the largest optical telescopes in operation today. Each of the telescopes can be fitted with several advanced instruments, such as spectrographs and cameras, which the astronomers need to capture the faint light that arrives at Earth from celestial objects. The VLT makes extensive use of key technologies, such as active optics, which was developed at ESO in Garshing, and adaptive optics, a technique to overcome the adverse effect of the Earth's atmosphere on starlight. 
With adaptive optics, telescopes on the ground can see as well as if they were in space. Even sharper images can be obtained by combining the light from several of the main telescopes and a number of smaller auxiliary telescopes. So the VLT is turned into a giant interferometer with which it is possible to observe the shape of stars which are one million times further away from us than the Sun or to probe inside planet-forming disks around young stars. Maintaining a high-tech facility far away from civilization and in the middle of a desert is a major logistics challenge. In order to guarantee the supply of water for the observatory, special trucks have to transport this valuable resource on a daily basis over a distance of some 120 kilometers before it is put into storage tanks. Moreover, Paranal has its own power plant which generates the electricity needed to run the installations. The generators are checked at regular intervals to avoid malfunctions. Catering plays an important role too. The kitchen staff constantly serves a wide variety of fresh food. The observatory must remain open 24 hours a day all year round. The days are reserved for maintenance, instrument upgrades, calibration and tests, while during the precious night hours the telescopes are all pointing towards the sky, looking at objects so distant and faint that no human eye can detect them. The VLT plays a major role in literally all areas of optical and near-infrared astronomy. It has made major contributions to cosmology, the study of large-scale structure of the universe, by enabling observations of galaxies as far as 13 billion light-years away from us. Their light has traveled through space almost three times longer than the Earth has existed. In our galaxy, the Milky Way, the VLT has enabled precise measurements of heavy elements in stars and thus helped verify the age of the universe. It has carried out detailed studies of the inner regions surrounding the black hole at the very center of our galaxy. Here we witness the spectacular movement of a star only 17 light hours away from the black hole as it is being pulled towards the hungry monster. The VLT has also been able to probe deep inside the center of another galaxy, showing for the time network of filaments the channel matter from the outskirts of the galaxy down to the center. The VLT also discovered the first triplet of supermassive black holes lying more than 10 billion light years away. Closer to us, the VLT discovered the first triple asteroid in our solar system, the rubble pile minor planet Sylvia and her twins Romulus and Remus. More recently, astronomers working at the VLT obtained the first optical image ever of an extrasolar planet, a planet in orbit around another star. Such planets have been known to exist for the last 10 years, but until recently they could only be detected by indirect means.